Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. So I'm here in my chicken coop, and today is a super hot day. We're gonna hit 105 degrees today, uh, which is actually pretty common in August here in Texas. I'm in South Texas, but that's just really hot. And, and chickens are really well suited for cooler temperatures, but most chickens cannot handle the high heat like we have. Now there's a couple trains of thought on this. One is, as long as you've got a covered, which I'll touch on in a minute, uh, they can find shade. Uh, doing nothing is best because then you're, um, if you do too much with them, you create a soft chicken that can't handle things. However, last year, even with this covering, I did. <laughs> last year, even with this covering, I did lose a chicken due to the heat, which is something I don't want to have happen this year or any year, really. I don't want to lose chickens due to the heat. If I'm going to lose a chicken, I want it to be because I'm harvesting it to eat. <laughs> so I'm going to go over today all the things I do to help keep these chickens cooler in these really extreme temperatures. Granted, if it's 95 degrees, I don't do much other than keeping this up. Some of these really high temperatures, I've got to bring the temperature down. So I'm going to go over all those things that I do. And you guys can try to see if you can implement some of those in your flock if you've got some extreme temperatures and are losing chickens. Okay, one of the biggest things that is helpful is this tarp. So. During the summer, you really want to keep this covered. Now I keep this covered all year round because I've got some hawks around here and I'm trying to keep these guys from being seen from the hawks. But during the summer, this is going to really stop the UV radiation in here. And you can see sometimes the sun will like during late afternoon or early morning, you can see even we've got a little bit, the sun is coming in on like one side and you'll see that they're they're always like huddled in one spot where it's shady, especially in late afternoon with the sun coming in this way. We'll have sun all the way to like right here. You'll see them all huddled right on this side, okay? Because they are getting out of the sun. That is really beneficial. It's something you really need. Now, the problem is a lot of these tarps, especially in the Texas UV sun, uh, will deteriorate very quickly. But these are canvas tarps. So they breathe. They allow airflow, it's not a plastic thing, it's canvas. These have lasted a long time, even through the summer here. Um, there has been no problems with rippage or anything. They're very strong. Um, in fact, we get heavy, heavy winds. They're, they've got these grommets on them that I zip tie down. I've lost a couple zip ties here and there. Um, but I, I use these to really kind of put them down on each side, and then I just zip tie the sides so they're not blowing everywhere. But I've had no problems. You would think with the heavy, heavy winds, I mean, these are almost like a sail. They're really pulling hard. And I've never had any of these rip. I do have a couple little spots like this, but that's because I didn't do a great job with this uh, fencing material with the chicken wire and pieces of wire sticking up through and when it rubs, it does rub that down, but that hasn't caused any more extra rippage. I mean, look, I'm pulling on this and it's not tearing more. So these are heavy duty. Um, they've lasted over a year now, and uh, well over a year actually, in this incredibly heavy sun. I mean, this, this sun is very, very strong, and it, uh, it bleached them. So you can see, like under here, you can see a color change, right? Um, from where it wasn't fully, uh, you know, hit by the sun, it's bleached them, but it hasn't turned them brittle. Uh, which will do with a lot of the plastic tarps. I've noticed I've got some plastic tarps that maybe I've got, you know, a couple months with before they just start turning into shreds. Um, they, they get real brittle and you barely touch them. They, they fall apart. But these are really good. And they were really good price, actually. I think they, I want to say $50, but that was last year. Prices change. As you guys all know, prices are gone going fluctuating quite a bit. They're going up um, like crazy, but at least when I bought them, I thought they were a pretty good deal. I will link in the description section if you're interested in these tarps for yours. They come in a couple different sizes. Just keep them covered is probably the biggest thing when it comes to keeping them cool and not overheating in the summer. All right, tip number two is get a fan, especially if you've got a coop. So a subscriber of mine had recommended this Thank you, Jason. So Jason, I was talking with him about how um, I recently had a mama uh, go broody and she was laying on some, there's, there's the babies, by the way, she did uh, hatch them. She was laying in here and it was hot um, and she was panting. And when chickens go broody, they don't move. They, they literally just stay in one spot. They don't move from the, the nest, uh, except for every once in a while to get water and sometimes food. 
and I was worried about her because it was hot. She was panting and this will, you can see, just hits in the sun and this gets really hot. Um, and I just didn't want to see her have too many issues with uh, overheating and maybe die while she was trying to lay on those eggs because they will sacrifice themselves. Um, they will die in order to keep those eggs protected. It's just motherly instinct, which is great for nature, but it makes it difficult for us trying to raise chickens. You got to try to keep them from dying, right? So I was worried about it and I was like, man, they're overheating. And so Jason, uh, thank you, had recommended this. He has one of these and he says it's a really good one and it's easy to install. And you can see that this is, this fan is blowing right towards that. So it was, uh, it's a solar panel because I don't have electricity out to here, but getting some sort of air circulation, especially, by the way, it's, I gotta, I gotta clean out this coop. They poop a lot. Um, I just cleaned it out just two weeks ago and it's time again, but you can see this thing. It's blowing pretty hard and it's really, really actually pushing a lot of air towards these. And after I installed this, she was panting a whole lot less. She was doing a lot better. And so... I highly recommend some air circulation, especially in a closed coop like this or a nest box or wh whatever the birds are going to be in during the day um, if they're going to come in there uh, because that can just sit and roast kind of like if you've got kids in a car, like you just don't do that, right? It overheats and it can heat up quickly. And the same thing goes with your coop. My third recommendation is keep the place hosed down. Water, when it evaporates, cools, especially when you've got some wind. I mean, you don't have to keep it wet the whole day because that's a lot of water and you don't want them standing in, you know, wet water, but hosing most of it down, maybe once every two hours, letting it dry and then do it again, will add to lowering the temperature at least for a little bit. A lot of times I'll just hose off this up here. Little, little baby is freaking out over there. I'll hose off all this. And by the way, you can hose that off, wash it, no issues it doesn't stop it it's it's waterproof so that's good handles rain and stuff and then hose off the top of the tarp here and then i'll i'll just kind of soak all around and under this coop on top of the coop and then i come in and i will start watering all of this just keep it all hosed down and not you don't want this super heavy. Uh, you don't want to over saturate everything. You're just giving a light layer of water. This will evaporate in minutes. And while it evaporates, it drops the temperatures. Now you don't want to directly shoot them and they'll move out of the way when you get close to them. Come on guys, there we go. All right, so that's a couple ways that you can keep them cool and if you implement all that, pretty much 90% of the time, you're going to be able to keep them cool. However, there are some days like today, that's 105 degrees, that you just got to do just a little bit more for them. Frozen fruit comes into play. So I like watermelon just because it's easy. You can set it in there and then they just peck on it while it cools down. You can do frozen grapes. You can do, uh, you got to cut them in pieces though, but you can do frozen strawberries, anything frozen throw in there and when they eat it, it really drops their internal temperature. So I'll show you kind of what this looks like. And this actually is their favorite thing. They love this. They're just gonna go crazy for this. Whoa, bud. Basically I buy a watermelon, the kids like watermelon, and I'll cut the sides off, you know, um, and I freeze kind of half of the watermelon. We eat half and, and it's just, you know, it's really, really nice for them. Uh, watermelon is probably my favorite to do this with just because it's so easy and inexpensive. I get multiple days of this and you can see they're just pecking away and they're getting some of that really frozen cold watermelon in their bellies, which is going to cool their internal temperature down and drop it. So if you notice that they're really panting a lot and kind of having a hard time, bring some frozen treats out for them. It'll completely change their demeanor and they'll they'll feel a lot better and you'll see they'll be showing way less signs of overheating. For me, this is the final thing that I do. Usually I bring this out at the very hottest time of the day, around three or four. And there's a lot of water. The, the nice benefit about this is, especially if they're not drinking a ton of water because it warms up, uh, this has a lot of water in it. It's watermelon, that's what it's called, but there's a lot of moisture in it, so it will help keep them hydrated as well as uh, cooling them down. So. so there are my couple tips on how to cool your 
chickens in the extreme heat. I mean, if any place has extreme heat, it's here in South Texas. So I've learned over the last couple years on keeping chickens, how to keep them alive. And uh, while this isn't all foolproof, um, that this will help drastically. Um, now for most of you in the United States, if you hit 100 degrees, and that's rare, right? Uh, here, we're every single day over 100 degrees. But if you are starting to push those temperatures in the high 90s, uh, low 100, especially if you have breeds that are really better suited for the cold versus I've got some more kind of warm, uh, they, they like the heat a little bit better uh, breeds. But if you've got some, some of them that really like the cool and you're hitting temperatures of close to 100 degrees, these are ways that you can cool down that flock and help keep them alive, at least aid to keeping them alive. Uh, there are some times where there's just nothing you can do. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments section. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other ways that you can keep your chickens healthy and happy in the heat. So if you guys have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section as that way you can help everyone because I definitely don't know everything. So uh, we'll build this community and you guys help each other. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.